really revelatory documents yes. being released here by the Biden administration with regards to 9-11 in Saudi. I've become quite obsessed over the last couple of weeks just kind of revisiting 9-11 over the last 20 years. And one of the parts that will always get me is the Saudi connection. And a lot of the, a lot of the questions around the Saudi Arabian involvement. I'll say at the top, like, look, there is still to this date no evidence that the highest levels, and I say the highest levels, of the Saudi government were involved in this plot. If anything, they hated bin Laden just as much as we did. But here's the question. What about the lower level ones? Mm -hmm. And uh, those documents were held very tightly by the Bush administration. The Obama administration vetoed that bill that was pushed through the U.S. Senate, which would allow 9-11 families in order to sue the Saudi Arabian government. Mm. Then the Trump administration refused to declassify a further number of documents. Biden, in occurrence with the 20th anniversary, ordered them declassified. We covered this about two weeks ago. Well, we got our very first one. So let's put this up there on the screen. And this is very important because what it does is that the first declassified 9-11 document by the FBI also includes a memo. Now, within the memo, the FBI actually point to it and say definitively that it now shows no Saudi conspiracy. So let's put that zero hedge actually is the one who spotted this. Let's put that up there on the screen, that tweet. And what he points to there is that the FBI's kind of introductory memo, which was written in 2016, says it puts to bed any doubts about Saudi complicity. However, that is not even remotely true because what you can actually see within the document is that it details even further the Saudi official Omar al-Bayoumi who was in California and actually helped two of the 9-11 hijackers both secure a, a secure like a boarding house, a place to stay. He claims that he just ran into them while he was at, yeah, okay. Right? <laughs> also, Mr. Bayoumi, get this was a grad student who never went to school, had no discernible sense uh, uh, source of funds, and just happened to be in California next to mm. the 9-11 hijackers. That seems legit. I got a lot of questions. They've also tracked the way he yeah. was, in fact, receiving all of these payments exactly. from all these, like, Saudi-run firms yeah. and not showing up to actually do any work, but still getting paid. Um, and... These two hijackers, they didn't speak any English. No, exactly. It was uh, uh, Midhar and Hazmi. They spoke zero English, and he was their shepherd. And right. they were the first two to arrive here in the United States. Right, and what people yeah. who encountered them at the time said is that there was no way they could have navigated around America without help. Bayoumi just happens to meet them <laughs> immediately upon their arrival, right. happens to provide financial support to them as well, and basically shepherd them around. And then why this is important is because he had direct connections to at least Saudi consular officials exactly. and was being at paid backdoor right. by the Saudi government. So effectively, it looks very much like Mr. Bayoumi was Saudi intelligence um, operational on the ground here doing something doing something and just happened to become really besties with these two 9-11 right. hijackers. The new memo also cites an FBI source who said Biomi held, quote, very high status at the Saudi consulate in LA. So at the time, they tried to portray him as, oh, he was barely anybody, didn't even know here. Here's what they said. He had, quote, even higher than many of the Saudi persons in charge of the diplomatic mission, strongly suggesting that he was an intelligence agent running a covert op on U.S. soil. So, that is what is inside the new 9-11 document. And I, I, I knew when it was going to come out that it was almost certainly going to concern al Bayoumi. Really what it is is that there are so many questions on 9-11 which remain completely unanswered. Lawrence Wright, who wrote The Looming Tower, which is my favorite book, oh, great. on 9-11, he gave an interview that I was watching this weekend in which, you know, the exact reason why the CIA never put Nawaz al-Hazmi and Khalid al-Midhar on a FBI watch list still today is unclear. Wow. And by that, I mean they covered it up. Wow. They still, 20 years later, we do not have an official justification as to why a CIA cable which recognized that these two gentlemen had visas to the United States in 2000 were not given over to the FBI. We don't have the names of those people. We don't know who was responsible. So over 50 people read that CIA cable while it was inside of their system. Nobody at the FBI was notified. Now look, 
is there a question? Could the FBI have even tracked him down? Would have been hard. Look, it was 2000. Like, it wasn't exactly the same situation. But maybe, I mean, what if we tried? There are so many of these bureaucratic messes. And to this day, not one person inside the CIA was ever fired. because. Yeah, of well, and yeah. I mean, it's just clear that for decades— the connections to Saudi officials have been covered up. And that's 100%. the 9-11, Families United, um, Terry Strada, they put on a statement with a very different assessment yeah. of this document than the government's official assessment <laughs> of like, who can say whether there were Saudi connections here? Let's go ahead and throw that uh, statement up on the screen or at least a portion of it. They say, now the Saudi secrets are exposed and it is well past time for the kingdom to own up to its officials' roles in murdering thousands on American soil. Of course, the Saudi government says they wor- welcome this declassification, and of course they had absolutely nothing to do with it. But if there's one thing that's clear about the way that people have been lied to over these many years, I think this document shows you the way that bipartisan administrations, Bush, Obama, Trump, work to cover up some of these connections to Saudi officials who were at least in contact routinely with some of these hijackers. It still just shows what a joke the 9-11 Commission is. And, you know, I'm doing my entire monologue on kind of a retrospective on how terrible, actually, that the Bush administration screwed up the response to 9-11 and then drove us into the war in Iraq. And on the 20th anniversary, it really is so important that we still try to get to the bottom of this because— It's just like what we're experiencing now with the Wuhan stuff. You know, actually, yesterday was the two-year anniversary to date that the database at the Wuhan Institute of Virology was just miraculously taken off, which had described Hmm. the bat and rat pathogens that they happened to have there. Oh, it's just gone, you know, because of uh, cybersecurity threats is what they claim. Oh, and then all of a sudden, you know, you start to see all kinds of crazy little infections pop up in 2019, just a month after this entire incident. Are we ever going to get to the bottom of it or it's going to be like this our crystal and saga 20 years from now going to be doing a <laughs> segment of like, the lies and the cover yeah, ups president donald trump junior god god oh, help god. us has declassified uh, or no president baron at that time baron trump uh, at that time has declassified a document i got a which, little bit of hope for baron i think he would declassify he's very document. tall you know he's got a lot of energy <laughs> so i mean you go and it's like are we going to be doing segments 20 years from now on like tiktok or whatever on chinese global since they rule the world about how they, you know, the, oh, well, the Wuhan Institute of Virology and somebody's declassified this document. That's what it feels like. It's just, it's un, it's so crazy to me. That's all of these, all this information, all of these documents and more completely covered up and that they covered it up intentionally so that we could go to war in Iraq. Well, and that's it. And this is actually a good segue to the next yeah. segment. 15 of the 19 hijackers were from Saudi. Right. Remember that. Um, and somehow we end up at war in Iraq. Yeah. (laughs) And bin Laden's hiding out in Afghanistan. They offer to turn him over and we're like, nah, we're good. Now we're good. Well, we're feeling so hubristic that we thought we can crush the Taliban, remake Afghanistan, spread democracy, all of this nonsense. And of course, by the way, secure lots of military wealth and trillions upon trillions of dollars in fees for military contractors and military industrial complex. It is such a crime that has been committed to this country, what has been done to these people, the surveillance that was justified, the breach of civil liberties that will never be ruled back that was justified by all of this, the complete destabilization of an entire region, the fact that we made ourselves so much less safe. We helped to generate new terrorist groups. We made the Taliban more powerful than they've ever been before. ISIS. That's the real legacy. And every year when 9-11 rolls around, I think to myself, if we had done nothing in response, we would have been infinitely better off. And the world would have been infinitely better off than the actions that George W. Bush caused us to take. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.